Tell us about your uh, sit-down visit with Judy. Well, Judy Arnold's had a very interesting life. And over the last few years, she documented it in a book that she finally finished and published last year. As I said, I don't read many books, but I had to read this one. I did and really learned a lot about her that I didn't know previously. If you remember the old roller derby on Channel 48 in Philly back in the day, or even if you don't, I think you're going to enjoy my chat with Judy. So let's fire that up. Here we go. Gwen Miller and Giuliano now. The jamming action. Giuliano and everybody's All-American gal trying to go long distance. Gwen Miller up and El Sano with that patented hip check locking down Gwen Miller. So happy to have this wonderful woman back on Philly Press Box Radio. It has been way too long. Roller Derby Hall of Famer, Judy Arnold. Hey, Judy, welcome back. Hey, Chet. Good to see you. We've, we've only aged a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Judy, when you see a video like I showed at the start, you know, you skating around 50 years ago, does that bring back a lot of memories? Oh, my gosh, yes. Anytime I see him, I'm like, what? Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> oh man well judy you are not only a roller derby hall of famer you're also a minister and a public speaker and now an author yeah you wrote this book last year derby queen the judy arnold story and i gotta tell you i really enjoyed it what made you decide to write an autobiography many people over many years had said you need a book you need to write a book and i thought no way i'm not a book writer I don't think so, but it just happened. Uh, it, it was eight years ago that some young couple was speaking to me and they said, Judy, you need a book. And it was like, yes, this is the time. And it was a long process being that I'm a skater and an athlete and not a writer. I, I wasn't good in school. You know, it's just not my thing, but we, I had help and God bless the people that helped me. I'm so grateful for the way it came out. It got my life, and yet there's tons more. My One of my housemates said, you need to write another book. I said, be <laughs> quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you grew up in Northern California, and yeah. while I know you loved your parents and your brothers, you wrote in the book that your relationship with your mom and dad wasn't always ideal. How so? Yeah, well, when I was young, of course, they were, they were together, but uh, there was alcohol in the home, and... Um, some some arguing not a lot but by the age of nine my dad divorced my mom and that broke my heart because i was very close to my dad being the only girl i had two brothers that i fought with all the time and uh but anyway uh i was close to my dad so it was really a heartbreaking experience when he left because you know he said oh i love you honey and i always will but then he's gone my mom was not a real affectionate person but she she hung in there with us. I thanked her in the years in, before she died by many times. I thanked her for not giving up on us three kids because you could imagine me alone was a handful, but then two brothers, you know, one older, one younger, and she hung in there with us. She worked hard as a waitress. It's in the book, a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff, but some painful stuff in my childhood. I've had people read it and say, I had no idea the things you went through so you know yeah, you're, just, yeah. you're just a star you don't have any problems you know your, your life was always wonderful <laughs> i learned a lot about you in the book you said you weren't a great student i didn't know that i would never have guessed that you mentioned though that you were a very active kid and that you indirectly developed your signature leapfrog move even before you started skating how so absolutely i would start for whatever reason leapfrog over a fire hydrant i don't remember how we, that exactly got started but anything challenging and as i got older i thought i wonder if i can get over that mailbox i gave it a try and i could leapfrog mailboxes so i was getting ready for roller derby <laughs> and big people like earlene brown that i had to leapfrog over <laughs> you mentioned that uh you discovered an interest in roller derby as a, a youngster you actually joined the bay area bombers at the young age of 16. so yeah. when you started skating you know obviously you were the youngest one there were you intimidated at all absolutely yeah i remember uh you know in in training school and it was my group of skaters in the training school i was considered one of the best so you know you get a little okay i'm really good and then i stepped on the track with the pros and i was scared to death i didn't know what to do i didn't know who to block who not to block who was going to kill me you know 
and it was intimidating but i i had peanuts meyer carol meyer meyer myers and she was she had trained with me and she'd already got on the bombers i said who what am i supposed to do she said stay out of the way <laughs> that's what i did for a little while <laughs> always good advice <laughs> you yes. ended up with the hawaiian warriors and then that franchise moved to philadelphia in 1967 after living on the west coast and then hawaii that had to be a real culture shock moving to philadelphia absolutely uh besides that a california girl yeah. most of the kids that came to philly were from california so um we didn't we knew nothing about that kind of cold i mean cold here was a little light jacket and you know a pair of pants instead of shorts i think i put another funny story in there about a car that someone had brought from california this is later in my career and and uh, she needed to sell it so i bought it and she out here had put plastic seat covers to protect the seat covers i know you back east y'all don't do that but i bought it from her and one one uh, winter day I, I came night i came out of the arena and i jumped i was freezing i jumped in my car and it heard crack <laughs> they plastic breaks like glass <laughs> yeah. and the next i was like oh dear <laughs> cold Hey, before long, uh, Roller Derby was drawing huge crowds in Philadelphia, first at the arena, then the still relatively new spectrum. The sport would occasionally go to other destinations. Didn't you have a scary experience in Puerto Rico? Oh, yes. we uh, They had sent our, our, our skating uh, films into Puerto Rico for a year before we went, and I got all kinds of fan mail from there. So when we went there, the fans were like, so excited and the building only I don't even know if it held maybe a thousand maybe a thousand I'm guessing not even that much but it was you know that place was packed and people started coming they were trying to get through the roof through windows any way they could get in there and by the time the game was near over they were surrounding the tracks some were trying to sit on the edge you know what the track looks like yeah and uh but they were the fans were almost like Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, they were there. And um, but uh, Buddy Atkinson said to me, Judy, as soon as the final whistle blows, make sure the girls know, get off of the track and get into the dressing room. So I told the girls and as soon as the whistle blew, we took off because the fans just mobbed the track. They wanted to meet, you know, they they wanted to meet Judy Arnold, Buddy Atkinson and one of our girls, Drew Scott, got knocked down and almost trampled. Hmm. And Jim Trotter saw her and grabbed her hand and picked her up. And she made it to the dressing room and the half of the track caved in. The course, wow. the guys, the guys were OK because they were stronger to deal with, you know, because mobs are dangerous. I don't sure. care what they're at. And they don't mean to be, but they're, you know, it was it was a frightening. That was one of my most frightening experiences. Well, yeah. fans nicknamed the Spectrum Judy's Place. You opened a clothing store called Judy's Other Place. I like that. And <laughs> didn't, you, didn't you and a teammate or two actually do some singing, Judy and the Jammers? Yes. Is that right? Oh, yes. I didn't know how much singing I did, but. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find a video of that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, someone may have been there that videoed, uh, you know, but I played the bass guitar. That's because that when we first came to Philly, we were so bored in the hotel. And one of the girls could play a guitar. I mean, she'd make a talk almost. He was, she said, why don't we get you a bass? I'll teach you the bass. And then she taught Yolanda uh, the keyboard. A you know, just we just learned some little bit of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he, I had about three runs I knew, do, 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 whatever. And she was so gifted, the guitar. She'd play all around that. She knew where I was going. I didn't follow her. She followed me. But because it, you know, and when they when they had us come to the arena in Philly, place was packed early mm -hmm. because we did it via four time, and and the um, manager came in the dressing room and said, "Get out there because they're they're trying to break in here to get in here to see your group." <laughs> That's how popular. I'm so grateful. Before we continue with our chat, I think we need to show another clip of you in action on the banked track. Okay. Arnold now spinning around and she's moving up to the ever dangerous Diane Severson. Arnold with her helmet off, making a few necessary adjustments. And Arnold now, <laughs> yes, sir, her knees knocking. Yep. Now Gwen Miller dropping back on defense. Now Severson ordering 
Glenn Miller on defense, on him now. Looking over the situation, let's see how Giuliano fares. And look, Glenn Miller tried that hip check, but it backfired. Arnold's got Glenn Miller and puts it right on Severson. And look at Severson. Look at Giuliano, Arnold having a ball, look at Quarles, Arnold, yes sir, flipping Severson over the rail, there's Trovino trying to help out, and what do you know my good friends, the third period coming to an end, and look at Diane Severson. Well, that was great. Now, while a chunk of the roller games action was, you know, kind of scripted, you certainly had your share of some very real injuries during your career. Tell me about some of those. Well, my major, when I was a, a kid in uh, San Francisco with the Bay Bombers, I skated too close behind one of the girls that, you know, when you're skating, you're swinging your arms and she hit me right in the nose. And I don't know if I put that in the book, but I went to the doctor the next day and they said, I broke both nasal bones, but there was nothing they could do, but yeah. I've never had a problem with it. And I'm so grateful. The Probably the greatest injury was in 73. Yeah. Yeah. The broken uh, ankle, right? It's a spectrum. I was, you know, all, all those people, the place was packed and I was doing what I usually did, trying to block two girls out. And the next thing I know, I'm in the rail, I'm going toward the rail and my skate caught on that bottom rail that keeps us from skating out. And my body went that way. And I broke my ankle in seven places and dislocated it. It was a horrible and lots of bruises. And, you know, sure. I'll never forget the morning I woke up thinking who hit me and I don't know if you're going to ask this question, but this is about the movie and Raquel Welch. Yeah, my next question. Yep. All right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, about the movie, uh, during your first visit to our show back in 2016, we did talk about the fact that you were in Kansas City Bomber. You appeared as yourself and also acted as Raquel Welch's stunt double for many of the more difficult skating action scenes. We just lost Raquel in mid-February. I want to ask you again about that. If I remember you said you had a thick dark wig on for your skating scenes and that made it kind of tough to do because you were having trouble seeing skating around absolutely because i've always had short hair and i have good for peripheral vision so when you're skating you need to know who's next to you or you know but and when we went to do the movie they put this wig on my head and and the hair not only had to be here but it had to be in my face when we were doing the movie they said as much as you can keep it in your face because they didn't want uh the you know, people to know it wasn't sure. hell we probably worked on the track for a couple three four days for me to get used to that and i never really totally did but i was able to function you also said uh, Raquel didn't seem like she was in the best of spirits she wasn't in a great frame of mind some of the time yeah I, you know it was a experience for me because you assume as young people especially we think if you have money looks and you're popular i mean you you're happy but working with raquel welsh i uh, i sensed that she was not a real happy person mm -hmm. you know she was kind to us and i i joke with people i said she was wise because she knew we could hurt her if we wanted to none of us would do that you know yeah. we would but she was kind to us, but I just sensed a sadness in her. And that really caused me to start thinking about who are you, Judy Arnold, and where are you going? And what's your life about? Well, when I got home, I started like, what? So where is my life going? You know? Yeah. Well, that movie came out in 72. And then in 1973, you did suffer that badly broken ankle. Within a couple of years, then you did decide to retire. Take us through that decision. Give up on a sport that you were terrific in, making some money, and then to all of a sudden, go to as you put it in the book an empty slate yes you know it was um from this from the movie i began to think so where is my life going because i was doing things that were against my conscience and trying to it's okay you do your thing i you do yours and it's all okay but i wasn't happy with who i was and i remember leaving the spectrum where the place was packed cheering my name and oh i love that i loved it but i left there and i drove home alone and i didn't like who i was becoming and i was it the you know people only see the star they don't many not many people knew me 
because I didn't let people get too close. I didn't want to get hurt again. I started searching and Sally Vega, who skated in the movie with me, she spoke to me about my life. And she said, Judy, you should give your life to God. And I thought, what's wrong with her? You know, God, I don't, I'll never have another day of fun. And, you know, I left home to have fun. And, and but I started to think, well, maybe God, maybe somehow if I can know God, I can, my life can be better. And so to make it short is that what happened was she called me when I was skating in Hawaii, this is months later and said, Hey, Judy, I, I, I was born again tonight. I got saved. I said, what's that? You know, what, what is that? And she said, well, when you come back to, to uh, New Jersey, you can go to church with me. So that next Sunday morning, when I got back, I went to church and went to the altar when they said, you know what, you're a sinner and you're lost and you need Jesus. And I thought that's me. That's me. And I went forward and I accepted Christ. And it was a process of uh, uh, working, working in my life. It was a process. But what I won't really want to say is in my personal time alone, trying to pray, I felt like I felt the love of God in such a way that that's what I always look for. I look for love. We're all looking for love and acceptance. And when we don't find it, we look another one. Try this, try that, try this. But when I met, really met Jesus Christ personally and knew that he knew everything about me and he loved me, it was like, okay, this is, this is where my life needs to go. I want to follow the Lord. You ended up teaching Bible school. You became an ordained minister, spoke to inmates at the L.A. County Jail for a while on Mondays. Yeah, years. <laughs> yeah, quite a life. Uh, the Roller Derby Hall of Fame was out of business for more than three decades. But when it got resurrected in 2004, not surprisingly, you were in the first new class of Hall of Famers. You're also, by the way, in our Philly Press Box Radio Hall of Fame, the only female with that honor. So wow. okay. <laughs> you don't even know that, I bet. You were honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award. It's got to be nice to, you know, be remembered and appreciated all these years later after roller derby. Yes, I'm so grateful. I have a great relationship with most of the skaters. We have a reunion every year here in Vegas and fans come and, you know, God made me who I was, no matter what I, no matter what we do with our life, we, our creator made us and he had a purpose for our life and roller derby, I believe fit into that somehow and and got to be famous for such a time as this to have a book and let people know that god loves them no matter where they're at no matter what they're doing and uh, my skater friends are many of them many of them are christians now too it's amazing <laughs> i had are... so many other questions that i didn't get to so you're gonna have to come back another time and we'll I do some do of those it. let's do it um <laughs> I wanted to say again how much I enjoyed this book. It's called Derby Queen, the Judy Arnold Story. How can your fans get a copy, Judy? I'm not giving mine away. There's Yeah, there's numbers away. Uh, if you want it signed by me, then you need to go through my website, judyarnoldskater.com. I got mine signed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, judyarnoldskater.com and if you do go, go through there it's paypal but you don't have to be a paypal member you just mm -hmm. order the book and put your credit card and i'll sign it and send it off to you otherwise you can send a check i have a address here in reading where they can send a check um and then it's actually now on amazon as a kindle Mm -hmm. so you can download it to your phone or to your for phone. just 10 bucks by the way if you do the yeah. kindle and <clears throat> chat God willing, I'm coming to Philadelphia uh, this year, and I'll be. I was, there. I was just going to say, if you do make it back to Philadelphia or South Jersey, please let me know. I yes. owe you lunch. Uh, we oh, we okay. may all be getting older, Judy, but you still have a lot of fans out there, and this book is great. So, buy it, read it, Derby Queen, the Judy Arnold story. Thank you so much, Judy. My pleasure. Thanks, Chet. Well, Chet. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to start out and say that is an amazing woman right there. I, I'll start out with that. Yeah, she is awesome. I'm so glad I got to know her. My, my thanks to my old buddy, Gary, for introducing me to her 10 and a half years ago. And now, you know, Judy and I are friends. I talked to her on the phone about a month ago for a good 20 minutes while I was on a car ride somewhere. And I'm so glad she's doing well. I don't know. She had a heart attack about 20 years ago. I didn't realize that until a few weeks ago. Uh, doing well now and uh, living out in Northern California. And I do hope she gets back east this summer. She occasionally does come back in the summer. And I saw her 
I think 2016 or 17. So, uh, yeah, I agree. There should be a movie of her life. That would be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to flip up. Uh, there's a bunch of comments here. I'm going to try to put as many of them up here as I can. Uh, the other the other thing I wanted to say, um, Chet, is the old videos. Great job pulling them together. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it, it took me way back in time, a long, long time ago. But those videos were cool. The old pictures are very cool. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess, again, I'll say this, the, uh, the quite a humbled woman. And it, it's uh, amazing that somebody could be at the, the top of one mountain and go down to the bottom of the mountain and end up back at the top of another mountain. I think that kind of explains Judy Arnold. Yeah, you know, and we have great guests pretty much every week on our show, but uh, I was really looking forward to this one. So I talked to her the other day and you know, I prepared for it and I didn't mind spending, you know, five or six hours afterward getting all those videos and pictures together and enhancing our little interview because she's worth it. She's such a nice woman and clearly from all the comments, she's got a lot of friends and fans out there all these years later. So that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we appreciate everybody that joined us. There's a lot of Judy fans that came on to uh, to to watch that interview and uh, watch our show tonight. And we, we certainly appreciate that and hope hope you all enjoyed it as much as we did.